shoot from the shadow side, use color contrast, use negative fill. Sure, these are essential steps to obtaining more depth in a scene, but in this video, I'm going to break down one of my biggest secrets, the cinematic lighting, and share a few insights around my workflow from a recent short writer's block. The film is about the creative process and delves into the mind of a writer who finds himself in an abandoned house, going from room to room, exploring different ideas represented by a variety of lights. The project was commissioned by Nan Lux to showcase their brand new Evoke 1200B, a super powerful bicolor COB light and the only one in its class with the ability to go from 6500 Kelvin all the way down to 2700 Kelvin. I'm a huge fan of bicolor lights because it opens up more freedom to play with color contrast without the need for gels. The reason I love powerful lights is because it gives you more control over a scene, especially when you're competing with existing light. In this case, we filmed in an abandoned house with lots of natural light coming in everywhere. Now what exactly is the secret I mentioned? I call it pockets of light, but it's also known as the checkerboard. This is one of the best ways to make a scene more dynamic and usually looks something like this. We have dark, bright, dark, bright, dark. Let's refer to them as pockets of light. Now these pockets were no accident and was intentionally set up to add more depth to the scene and it starts with having a powerful light. A focused strong light enables you to bring your exposure down in the bright parts in order to make certain parts of the scene darker. Like in this case we have two strong sources coming through these open doors with darker patches on the side and this one in the middle where we have our pulsing yellow light. For this we used the new Forza 150B because it's small enough to easily fit into tight spaces but strong enough to show up in a darker patch. So let's start here. With all of the lights switched off, you can see how much I brought down the exposure. It's 10 o'clock in the morning and the sun is around here. Switching on the evoke, I only focused it on the first gap where our talent enters the scene. Note how his face is not lit and that's because I blocked it off with a Forza 60B on a small softbox. Not only serving as a flag, but also a soft fill on his face. Having hard light and soft light in your subject has a way of making a scene feel more realistic. Next, we put a Forza 720B shooting through this gap to create another hot patch of light, helping with the contrast between these lines here. So basically, two strong hard light sources with a soft fill light on the face. Moving on to the next hallway scene, we've got a similar setup. First, we flagged all the windows on the left and the door in the back to have more control over the light. Switch on the Evo from the side and you immediately have this pocket of light. But now the background feels too dark, so we put a Forza 60B to create contrast between light and dark. Again you have the checkerboard, dark bright, dark bright. In the close up, we had this bright yellow light appearing behind our actor and this was done with the Forza 720B slowly turning away, luring our actor to the next scene. First I had to soften the light on his face with a motivating fill light on a softbox, in this case the Forza 150B. Again the checkerboard is clearly visible. It won't always look exactly like a checkerboard, but having pockets of dark and bright creates more interest in a seemingly boring and empty scene. Jumping to the bathroom, there was this tricky wall between the window and where we would place our lights, so we had to raise them up and shoot over it. Using the projector attachment on a 720B, I was able to shape a streak of light using the blades, but in order to compete with the strong hard light, we had to bring in some fill to even out the scene, and that's where the Evoke did the job. Leaving a gap for the streak of hard light, we softened the rest of the window with a full stop white silk and aimed the Evoke through here, which creates a nice balance without blowing out the hard light on the talent's face. This form of dappled lighting is a great way to create pockets of light. In this case, the framing also makes the shot a bit more dynamic, with a wider lens shooting right up against the wall as a leading line and some subtle reflections adding more depth. The studio sequence was filmed at a different location, and here we used some of the common lighting techniques mentioned in my other videos. For the typing shots, we relied on the backlight created by the screen, shooting from the shadow side, but the added reflections was the magic touch. For the wide shot, it wasn't 100% possible to shoot shadow side because of the screen, so we utilized color contrast with a warm practical in the back, motivated by a Forza 150B matched at the same temperature. We have our white light on the face coming naturally from the screen and cool moonlight in the back amplifying the color contrast, yet you still have this dark patch over his body maintaining depth. The rain and lighting flashes were faked with a garden hose and a Forza 60B on the lighting FX setting. 
A major selling point of the 1200P is the fact that the light fixture and power supply ballast are both IP54 rated, able to withstand inclement weather and extreme conditions. For the final scene, we used the Evoke on 2700 Kelvin to emulate a warm sunrise hitting our subject directly from behind. But now the screen didn't have enough punch to throw light on his face, so we motivated the screen with a Forza 60B to fill in his face and also on his hands. Now I want to take this moment and give a special thanks to the entire team in involved in this. Make sure you check out the full credits in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.